All right, moving right along here, I'm going to go ahead and add another subdivision, Control D. And that definitely helps show where some of these issues are with the geometry. So I'm just going to kind of run through here and do a little smoothing pass. It's not too bad. So I think probably the area that I'm most interested in messing with now is going to be this pinky area. So what I want to do is I really like to be looking at this view on this side of the reference blown up. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit Z and if I hit uh, flip H, mirror H, what that's going to do is flip the reference here and then I can scale it, get a little bit of a closer view of course and then uh, uh, Z to make this tool go away. The, the issue that I run into now is the geometry is basically flipped 180 degrees from what the reference is doing now. So what I want to do is just flip the geometry to match the reference. So that's going to be in geometry. Uh, actually, sorry, I think that's going to be deformation. And we should have a mirror option. So you can mirror in X, you can mirror in Y, or you can mirror in Z. thinking I might actually need to do this slightly differently because if I mirror it and I'm on the midline, well, let's just go ahead and try it. Z is going to be the axis that's going to flip it backwards. So let's just take a look. Uh, also, it's got multiple subdivision levels. So I'm going to go to delete lower. It's not a big deal. You can always rebuild them if you want. Sometimes they're not exactly the same, but they'll be close enough. So for instance, I just deleted lower. If I wanted to, I could just reconstruct my subdivisions and then there they are again. But again, I don't really it's not that big of a deal, but um, to do the mirror here in deformation, yeah, great, perfect. So I wasn't sure uh, if it was gonna try to um, pay attention to a center line, but I think that's this option up here, mirror and weld, where if I had done mirror and weld, it basically is a, a splitting it and welding the two pieces together. Mirror just flips it, so, so that's actually perfect. That's exactly what I was hoping for. So I'm gonna turn my little ground plane on here again because I can see that this finger is going a little bit too far below. And again, from this view, it's probably going to be closer to something like that. So we've got that extra subdivision on there. Using the move brush here. So I'm going to go to my clay tubes brush and reduce the Z intensity to something very minor. And also for this kind of stuff, it becomes very important to turn on this back face masking option because if I go a little bit larger with my brush size, it grabs the other side of the geometry and basically sucks it flat. And that's definitely not what you want to do. So with back face mask turned on, you can go as big as you want and it'll ignore geometry that is pointing away from your brush stroke. So I'm just going to use this to kind of add a little bit of volume. Kind of see what's going on there. It's probably, honestly, like maybe a little bit too early to start adding too much detail just in terms of my, my subdivision level. But I can start thinking about, like I can see how much webbing is going on there. Turn this guy off now. And start thinking about what that's going to look like. So now is as good a time as any, I guess, to go ahead with the, the Dynamesh operation. There is some minor utility to staying with the Z-Sphere just to be able to like isolate the groups fairly easily but i'm not sure that it really makes that much difference at this point i think we're we're kind of just into the sculpting stuff so now that you know basically all of the the, the big forms have been kind of figured out the fingers are sort of oriented correctly and pointed in the right direction and now really it's just a matter of like adding the the kind of sculptural stuff that you just have to use with a brush with and not so much transpose and move although we will certainly still be using a lot of those so let's talk about Dynamesh quickly. 
and I, you know, for the, the, the stuff that I'm doing right now, I'm just using the move brush and the clay tubes brush and a little bit of the smooth brush just to try to begin to figure out how to uh, replicate what I see in the image with the geometry. So for Dynamesh, we go ahead and hop over to a uh, another subtool here. I'm going to make a Sphere 3D and I'm going to duplicate it, scoot it over a little bit. And then I'll duplicate that and scoot that one over a little bit. So we'll start with this one here. So the way Diamesh works is it imagines all of 3D space is effectively filled with Legos. And what it does is it intersects that 3D space with your geometry. So it's going to be in your geometry tab down here under Dynamesh. And there are a few very important things to, to pay attention to. Most important is the resolution. So with the default resolution of 128, this is the size of the polygons that it wants to use for your geometry. Now, if I reduce that down from 128 to 64, you will see that the polygons are now twice as big. So as this number goes down, the polygons are going to get larger. So let me come back to, oh, it looks like this is actually, so the Sphere 3D1, that's a, a primitive, whereas these are PM3Ds, poly mesh. So if you don't see that PM3D, you're not gonna have a bunch of the sculpty options. So I will just go this way instead. So I'll show you one more a little bit lower. So we went from 64, so let's do 32. So you can see, you know, that's the difference between 128 and 32. So conversely, if I have my 32 and I take this up to 256 and I Dynamesh it. Oh, and to, uh, to recalculate the Dynamesh, you just hold Control and Mask off of the mesh. And if it detects that there hasn't been any change at all in the geometry, it's not going to do anything. So if you just wiggle it a little tiny bit, it'll recalculate that Dynamesh. And you can see how small those faces are relative to here. So this is 128, and that's 256. Um, hopefully that's clear enough. So uh, you may notice that there's still some faceting in here, so it looks like it's low poly. And the reason is because it baked that faceting into the Dynamesh. So if you ever have a situation like that, you know, you can always try a polish operation and I'll kind of smooth it out a little bit. It's like a, like a global smoothing thing. Again, that's in the deformation menu. So that's the uh, primer on resolution. And in the next video, I will show you a couple more things that are pretty cool about Dynamesh. Uh, we're not gonna probably mess with anything other than just getting nice, clean topology, but it does have some, some fairly useful functionality that I do cover in some of my more advanced uh, tutorials a little bit further down the road. But anyway, we'll talk about that stuff in the next video.